I've done seven video friends talk a couple of times, so biggest round of applause you've ever done. with my own two feet. I wore down the defences of my wistful-hearted writer by the sea until he could no longer withstand the sensual tidal colony. Or else he committed to a wedding
wedding just in the hopes that wedded bliss would finally stop me gifting him with sheets. <laughs> and I have lived my lifetime there because time moves differently on a screen. But both those times, in and off, still move for me. Side by side, I read both lives, a complex clock within a clock. And I can watch a life go past in just a lunch break, which is magic when you think about it. And so I spend a summer in my solitude, sort of, in just one afternoon. And not because the hot and hazy days are slipping past at 50 times speed, like a fast forward montage, although I would watch that. But and I would be happy the whole time like a child. But there's so much that happens there that I don't need to see. I need the event time. I need a thing that happens and when it happens on that timeline. And I don't need to see the in-between because it's okay to disregard a load of narration, to discard a bunch of sections where I do the same old things again and again. I pass the time in jumps and starts. And along the way, in the timeline, I am drifting, anchored to just the crests of the best waves. And then we meet a weird borderland. A small selection of life might add up to playtime beyond what I played if I wanted to, but sometimes I want to redo. Because sometimes we make mistakes, say sitting down to write a talk on the train, the two hour train, to your long planned cumulative final event. And when the circumstances were against you, or it's just your own damn fault, again, you may waste minutes of your precious time wishing that you've made a different turn much earlier down the line. And so we can, in a way, we roll back to a save where we feel secure, we wipe back to the beginning to choose to do things a little differently. We want to maybe choose a start point that will suit us better to our unchanged end goal. We want to maybe play for a different potential outcome to see all the best and worst possible versions of ourselves. But that time that we roll back or restart is never unplayed. We don't erase a timeline, we play a full stack of realities piled up on top of each other from that first point. And then we have a one and a zero in our hands that is somehow still a lot of minutes thinking about it, even though it's one and zero, which should be one. And whether we would change that past or that ending that we're coming to, we'll need it if we just keep going, it doesn't really matter because Forward and backwards are sort of fluid when you're not trapped in rubbish, time-bound human flesh. So, see, we can redo the past and then back to present and, oh, let's go back again. No rules. We're in a dizzying possibility space and we took the training wheels off of time. Let's go sideways. Let's do two timelines at once. Let's see bits of the past right here now in the future. Who gives a fuck, right? Because the thing about time as a concept is that we once we put it into media. Fuck it, we can do what we want. <laughs> we are driving off road down the dirt tracks of the universe and no one can tell me no. And the great thing is that we can do that because our brains think like nine things at once and they make a valid attempt to comprehend the enormity of the universe and they will try and understand anything if they let them. So a couple of timelines might not hurt. And so I got a bit excited there. <laughs> But we're into sobering single digits, where it seems at once both more manageable to me and more morose. So, for a minute, just one or so, let's take a quick aside through the fixed points on the timeline that brought us here. I have been with Video Brains for just a little over two years now, or 25 months ish, that's a bit of a grey area, which is one thirteenth of my life, which feels like nothing or over 17,500 hours, which really does feel quite big. And it's both of those, in the bad ways and the good ones, but mostly that last one. I've given just boy some talks here, in this room and others, and each were as weird and niche and poorly planned as this one. 
And I love them because they were time spent spectacularly, although if you've seen any of them, please don't tell me otherwise. And so we return now to my ninth, if you don't count a nine minute poem about walking simulators at Nine Worlds, talk. My last one, and like all the others before them, a mistake. And we are back in the timeline, and oh wait, no, we're still talking about me. <laughs> because that pause reminded me of a talk I did not hear. Please don't shout at me, I speak other places, and many things at once. But about the importance of doing a pause within your play. And not a pause screen necessarily, because those are always garbage, but a moment that you take on purpose to reflect on where you are, to either intentionally stop pushing on the march of time, or to let it wash over you as though it means nothing to you. To stop and see the world's time continue on without you, and realize you are not quite as central to this narrative as maybe you thought you would be. But even in a world where time dances at your fingertips, it doesn't notice you at all. Or borrow someone else's time and see how it passes just for them. And realize that even when you're done, everything will keep going. It doesn't have to stop, of course. But let your pauses give you a preference for slowness. Let time run unquestioned. A moment can be as long or short as it needs to be. An undefined entity of exploration. Let your seconds stretch out to fill small spaces. Put a minute under a microscope and scrutinize it from every angle. Suspend the sea of crystal and slow it down to nothingness. And let one second be all your seconds. Watch them seep into your bones, soak in it, savor it, set it aside and come back to it later. Don't be afraid to take time and to move nothing on, to just observe where you are and not how fast you're going. Because the minutiae of the life that you lead is just as important as the passage of the second hand. The pauses and gaps and spaces in who you are define us, and you won't see them until you stop. We start back up again, and stare into our reflection on the screen. How does our time out of time reflect us? In studies which I am unreasonably familiar with now, love flow, for example, where we sink into a task, or immersion where we feel a part of the game world and not our own, but what about time that isn't tricked from us? Not the subtle slip out of the timeline into something else that we might happenstance our way unknowing into, but consider what willingly makes you give up minutes that mean so much to you. Think about what matters to you most, and when you last allowed yourself the time to just do what you wanted. What we choose to spend our time on, even when it stretches on or breaks on us, is what, part of what defines us. What else could you have spent this time on? This 15 minute slog you've suffered through because I'm stood between you and the door. <laughs> it was right for potential until I slid down on it like a nihilist wasp. What could it have been for you? When you go home, do that. Five is a wake up. Five minutes is a warning, a curtain fall, and it fills me with anxiety. Five is so close to the thing, but not close enough yet. It is just enough minutes to worry in, and enough time to build up anticipation and expectation, but not enough to work yourself out of it. Five minutes is a panic in 300 shitty seconds. It can fuck right off. Let's skip from six to four. But there is another angle to this travesty of time, which is that five minutes is a break. A quick treat from past you to future you, via a present self that takes a breather. It's an ideal time to spend singing to a pot full of plants and an eternally travelling snail. One quick song, give them a spritz and a breathe, and then start moving again. Five minutes is a blank out time, staring at a shark that swims the same route every time, but still makes you smile, because it moves its tail just right. Five minutes is a time you can take, so do so. And then, with a sigh, five is over, and we stumble bleary-eyed into the dead days down in four. Between the spark of five and the panic of four, four, three, four feels wasted on us. 
It feels flat in comparison, an endless pause between two plot points, a vast sea of beige between ready and go. But this plodding, thankless task is one we know well in the must-do drudgery that plods along between our plot points, carrying our burdens. We are in our dead time, where time exists more as a pause than a continuum. If you have been a good boy and done your quests, the sun will go to sleep. No night time for you until the work is done. This is my favourite quote about dead time. We like to write, oh, it takes four hours to walk from one end of the continent to the other. Somewhere along that line, we lost that it's not really fun to walk for four hours. That's why people don't do it a lot. And I agree with that to a certain point, but sometimes a four hour walk is nice. So don't let any game designer tell you what to do. Three begins a countdown. A rush. It feels like there's an eternity between you and one, but blinking you could miss it. Three feels fast and I hate it. My reactions are so bad. So, so, so bad. And so quick time is a punishment for me. A split second test of my already wavering will to live, and I fail every time at speed. <laughs> Stop, let me be. And then, sometimes, it's not even quick time. It's just time that's really quick. <laughs> Things are too fast for me sometimes because I'm bad, and then people do it quicker for fun. <laughs> is a mystery to me, and if you solve its problems, let me know. But then after that, too, feels unreal. Somehow. You and a reflection, one and one, are waiting carving, and it's so small. 120 seconds. One thirtieth of an hour. A round of candy crush, or the time you accidentally spent asleep on the train. The two minutes can feel so final, and it does now, because it's all that stands from us at the end. And two minutes is a silence. And two minutes is a reflection. And two minutes is sad. And will end. But two minutes is also pretty good to have made it that close to the end. And suddenly, tick, there's no time at all. And the things that you worried about fall from your grasp like the snow, and it doesn't matter anymore what you do, because it's basically over, isn't it? And you tried your best, and that's that. But not quite. Because in this twilight zone of almost gone, but still holding on, sure, there is a chance to think about your next move, your next life. But maybe you don't. And give this moment to the now that you have found yourself in. The place and time where you will lay your arms down gently and accept that sometimes there is no more fight in you and that you did the best you could and that that's okay. And now, at zero, there is nothing and freedom and all the things before have made a mark for sure. They have changed the path of other timelines for other people. They have made impressions that will last and things that will outlive you. But for you, it's all that much spare time, and you are out, and you are done, and so in time, we must move on. Thank you for coming to video breaks. Good night.